There is a worrisome trend in education in America. More than half of college students are women, but only a handful study technology. 30 years ago, women made up more than a third of graduates with a computer science degree. But now, only about one-eighth of computer science grads are female. At the Grace Hopper Conference in Minneapolis, more than 4,500 women in technology will discuss how to reverse that trend. The keynote speaker is Cheryl Sandberg, Facebook's chief operating officer and author of the book, Lean In. Cheryl, good morning. Thank you for having me. Why has this happened? It's a hard question. People think that when computer science was first invented in the 1980s, it was pretty tied to typing, and that's something people think women do. This is another example of gender stereotypes holding women back and holding our society back. Then computers went into the home when PCs were invented. What kids did on computers was largely play games. A lot of the games were made for boys. Boys used the computers, and computers pretty quickly became something that boys did not girls. They also took computer science and they moved it into the engineering departments, which were predominantly men. But we know that this is just a stereotype. Mm -hmm. You can't see what you can't be. And if more women become convinced that they can be and they can be computer scientists, we can reverse this trend. So what will you say to the women? What do, what do you want us to know? What do you want them to know? I want the women to know that they can do anything. I want the women to know that technology is for them. These are great fields. But Cheryl, people say, we already know that. We, I am woman, hear me roar. I can do it all. I, I think there's, there's got to be a way to really, especially if a girl's sitting there, she said, I'm not good in math, I'm not good in science, but I think I could do this. Yeah. So the data says that stereotypes hold us back. Mm -hmm. The reason girls don't think they're good in math and science is because everyone tells them they're not good in science. Studies show that if right before a math test you tell girls, girls are good at math or girls do well in the test, they do better. Mm. What the, what the Grace Hopper Conference does is it brings together women in technology so that they can talk about how to get women into computer science so that women will know it's a profession for them. Cheryl, you make an interesting case about why this matters for the wage gap. How so? The census data showed us that for yet another year since 2002, the wage gap for women in this country has not moved. 77 cents to the dollar on average, even lower for African American and Latino women. Computer science is not only a field in great demand in a hard economy, but it pays 25, 30, up to 50% more. So if only 13% of those very high paying, very flexible jobs go to women, the wage gap inevitably goes, gets worse. And that's another reason we need to fix this. Is it better or worse in other cultures in other countries like China, or like other countries in Asia, or like Europe and Scandinavia? Yeah. So I've now been all over the world right. talking about my book. And I was in China just two weeks ago. And what's so amazing is that no matter where you go in the world, cultures are so different. Right. But one thing's the same, which is our stereotypes of men and women, boys and girls. Everywhere in the world, we believe boys should be assertive should be leaders. Everywhere in the world, we believe girls should be followers, giver to others. Everywhere in the world, we call little girls bossy. We never call little boys bossy. Boys are supposed to lead. The best quote I ever heard on this was yeah. Nora's. Nora has Nora the had the best quote. Of bossy. When Nora, when you interviewed me for 60 Minutes when my book first came out, Nora said, whenever my little, about to call my little girl bossy, I say instead, my little girl has executive leadership <laughs> skills. Can I just ask you about, because you, Mark has spoken to this uh, as, as well as others, is there a general attitude in Silicon Valley about NSA and the Snowden disclosures? This is a hard issue, and it brings up real tension for all of us between our privacy, which we all want and deserve, and Facebook is very focused on, and national security, which we also want to be safe. Those reports were false, and we came out strongly and said it. The NSA or any government does not have direct access to our servers, and it was very unfortunate that that was falsely reported at the beginning. Do, will something change? I think a lot is changing. So we went out and disclosed our number of how many times the government requests right. information from us over the last six months. It was kind of 10 to 11,000 requests on 20,000 people. We've also joined with other companies in suing the government to let us break out that number right. between law enforcement and national security. I think there is a real demand from our citizens for more transparency, and we'd like to be more transparent. Can I ask you, Facebook bought Instagram for a billion dollars. Emily White, who is the chief operating officer, says that they are soon going to introduce advertisements in Instagram. Are you concerned about a negative reaction? I mean, I'm a user of Instagram, that you're going to see a lot of ads that clog up your feed? 
So when we introduce ads to Instagram, they're going to be uh, part of the experience. I think if you want to understand the possibilities, you look at what brands are currently doing on Instagram. Burberry has a lot of Instagram followers. They are following and showing behind the scenes fashion shows. And I think people will use it well. You know, we're going to Instagram you today. <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> we're going to do that today. <laughs> All right, Cheryl Sandberg, great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you.